Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Our guests today have been covering the business sector in Roanoke for around three decades through publications including the Blue Ridge Business Journal and Valley Business Front. They've also been colleagues, friends, and mentors. Tom Field is now the publisher and co-founder for Valley Business Front. Dan Smith co-founded Valley Business Front and is still a contributor, also writing business and feature stories for publications like Roanoke Magazine. And welcome to both of you guys. Thank you, Gene. Be here. Did I give the Business Journal short shrift? When actually did the Business Journal get started and when did you guys get involved? Sure. Well, the original Business Journal started in 1988. Okay. So in a way, we're in our 33rd, 33rd consecutive year. When did you get when did you get involved? 1987. Okay, really? <laughs> yeah, at a very uh, inaugural issue. Uh, the first two uh, people who founded the Business Journal were very entrepreneurial, uh, colorful characters, and uh, I actually did the market feasibility study for the very first journal. And uh, you know, a lot of places had journals, these these newspaper tabloid business journal things. And so these two gentlemen um, thought maybe Roanoke could have one. So I got to call all the businesses to see if uh, uh, people would support it and want it. And it was kind of, it wasn't really a resounding yes. It was like, well, if you build it, if you make it, well, we'll probably, we'll probably support it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, uh, they, that's why I call them true entrepreneurs because they really did take a risk and they decided to uh, launch a thing and it, it was pretty much an overwhelming success from the very beginning because there was, there was a thirst for that coverage. You know, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See? And you I didn't, he was there before I was. Right. When did I you mean, get involved? I, I, well, the first editor got fired after the first issue. Yikes. Uh, I had just left a job in the morning and that afternoon I was working for uh, uh, Thurman Horn at, uh, uh, at, the, at the Business Journal and I had never written business before in my life. Really? Yeah. And when was that? Was that back in the early was, 90s? It was 1988. Okay, it was. I okay. mean, it was the second issue mm -hmm. is when I started. Wow. But Did the Business Journal always cover the Roanoke and the New, New River Valleys? Yeah. Well, okay. It was originally Lynchburg called, too. Yeah, it was called... Really? Uh, okay. Uh, Blue Ridge Regional Business Regional Journal. Business. And then yeah. They dropped the word region, uh, but yeah, Lynchburg, Roanoke, and New River Valley was mm -hmm. pretty big areas. What do, from the heyday of the Business Journal, is there, is there a memory or two that stands out, either about quirky characters or stories that might have come up, or just things you were seeing at the time? You mean other than this guy? Right. <laughs> I, I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a picture on my door of Clint Eastwood with a gun <laughs> like that saying, go ahead, make one more change. And that was aimed at Jim Lindsay, who was constantly messing with stuff and making me crazy. And he was great. I mean, he, was, he taught me how to be a business journalist, mm -hmm. but he drove me crazy in the process. Right. Well, you <laughs> gave me my first assignment with the business journal. I'd been writing for our, our friend John Montgomery's, and he was also sports. involved with the business journal. Been doing the sports for about a year and yeah. gave him my first yeah. assignment. Um, let's just talk about some of the changes you might have seen. What was the business climate like in the late 80s, early 90s? Where, have we taken a quantum leap or has it been sort of this kind of like nudging along, do you think? I th we called it, uh, we called it a go-go economy, I think, at the, at the time. Uh, it was, uh, it was really uh, foot down uh, on the accelerator for an awful lot of uh, businesses at the time. And there's so much innovation. I, I, I look back at, uh, look back at some of those old uh, business journals and see us defining megabyte or gigabyte and uh, looking into some of the things that are, are just uh, uh, daily now, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for us, uh, 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 second nature to us, we're having to define, we're, we're having to uh, uh, examine. And, and I, th I thought we'd, uh, some of the best work we did was in those definitions and in explaining to people how to use a dead gun computer. <laughs> <laughs> or the internet even. Uh-huh, exactly. Uh, I remember tra when I was traveling for business, I used to read Business Week on the plane and they were talking about this internet thing and you'd be able to do all this stuff and all that. What, what, what do you think, Tom, when you look back 30 years, 35 years, what's been the biggest, if you had, had a, what's been the biggest leap, do you think, so far? What, what, what was different then? Well, it, you know, certainly the 80s, late, late 80s, it was just popping. It was every, everyone, it was, it was very energetic, very energetic climate, I would say. Uh, the dot-com and all that, of course, happening, and uh, 
uh, it is funny when you look back and 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 see the trends. Uh, and there's a uh, there's definitely a little bit of stalling right now uh, with the pandemic. So uh, we're watching all of these things. But mm -hmm. you know, d uh, locally, even in even in the 80s, uh, Runnock was still somewhat of a railroad town. Uh, defined that way. NS was still headquartered here in Norfolk. It Southern. was. Yes, and, it was. And right. when people came to visit, uh, th that was often the uh, the way you would describe it. Roanoke was a headquarter, railroad town. And uh, so we have diversified quite a bit since then. Now our, our, our biggest, uh, I would say our biggest crown right now is the uh, Virginia Tech Carillion mm -hmm. uh, research and medical. And we're making uh, quite a few headlines on that. Mm -hmm. So there is a shift to that. Uh, the, the Virginia Tech Carillion thing hasn't quite gotten to where the railroad was at one time, right. so people still don't necessarily describe it in that terms when they come to visit. Uh, but what's neat is, is it's very entrepreneurial still, uh, even more. There's all of these bet between RBTC and the uh, gauntlet and uh, uh, ramp. The ramp and all these accelerator programs. There's just a lot happening and a, certainly a lot to talk mm -hmm. about. You know, the, the, uh, that's all been institutionalized. Roanoke, since Roanoke was a baby, has been great for entrepreneurs because it has a deep bench of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, people who teach other people. It always has had that. One of the things I, I hope, I don't want to go through this without mentioning that in the 80s and 90s, we had a good time. I mean, we had a heck of a good time. We did uh, with the, uh, I remember we had a, a construction issue every year and one of the, one of the, one of my favorite things to write for it was uh, what we called the potty pole. Uh, we <laughs> looked around and found out how many uh, outhouses had been, uh, uh, had been rented through the spring growing season, uh, or through the, th through the spring uh, uh, construction season. That was an indicator? And, then, and that was an indicator of whether construction was going to be any good. And it was right on the money. It was. But, but we had fun doing the thing. Mm -hmm. it, uh, journalism these days is not always a lot of fun. Why do you think and that's changed? Why? I mean, it's, it's obvious. We're getting attacked from everywhere. Uh, our, uh, 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 our ethics are being questioned. Our, uh, uh, our methods, our, uh, everything about us is being questioned. We're, we're being, uh, you know, you're being told that uh, we're anti-American and uh, uh, we're not, we're not. Uh, we're your next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, we live down the street. We make a living. We have kids. You know, I don't. I, I, I do, but mine are older than I am. But uh, uh, it's just, it's a whole different situation now. I don't know whether that permeates all of the business, but uh, journalism's hard. You can look at what's happening to the Roanoke Times with, and with the growth of the or the institution of the two <coughs> new publications online, online right. now. Roanoke uh, Rambler and the other one is? Uh, uh, Cardinal. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the, the Times has lost three really good long-time reporters this week. Really? And, you know, they're just gushing uh, veterans. Yeah. And, you know, that's not good for us. Well, you know, with the advent of online journalism, everybody's a journalist mm -hmm. at this point, does it, does it make, is it harder for publications like Valley Business Front and well, to, to maintain their credibility? Right. Well, actually, that's what I like about a monthly business journal. Uh, everything being so instantaneous these days, uh, you're right. There's citizen journalism. Uh, social media has has really <laughs> has really come in and cluttered things up uh, and messed with people, if you will. Uh, but you know, when you do a monthly journal, we do assignments. We send people out. We talk. We listen, and uh, we write it down. We compile it, and you actually have to think a little bit before you produce it. And of course, we're mostly doing advocacy for business mm -hmm. and uh, positive stories and just introducing people to uh, businesses. So from that respect, uh, it's, it's, kind of a, uh, it's kind of a nice reprieve. I've had people tell me, uh, y'all won't go digital, will you? And I'm like, no, well, we have a digital version, but no, we're, we're still doing the printed magazine. There's and they actually like that. a lot like of people that. like about having that thing in their hands. And of course, I, I have full disclosure, I'm the editor now, but Business Journal, I mean, uh, Valley Business Front, right. succeeding Dan in a way. But um, some people like that, especially with a glossy magazine. Mm -hmm. It's nice to, it doesn't pop on the internet the same way it does in your hand. Right. When we first started, people were always telling me that they loved the smell of it, <laughs> they loved the feel of it, 
and they love the size, that, that small size. Mm -hmm. uh, that you, you, could, uh, uh, you could put it on your exercise machine at the gym and read it. Right. <laughs> you know, I wanted to bring one thing up. You were talking about how in the late 80s, early 90s, things were popping here. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I've heard people say, you know, things were really slow 30 years mm -hmm. ago, and, and, and now it's humming along more with things like the Virginia Tech Carillion Campus. That, that, but you're you saying that's not the case. It's, uh, it's different. It's, uh, there's, a, there's a different momentum right now. There was an excitement back then that I haven't seen in a while. Uh, I, th I think Tom might agree with that, that uh, uh, people were excited to be in business. Uh, they, they were eager to get our publication and right. to read about other people. And uh, uh, they liked business. They, uh, they talked about business. It, it, and it wasn't always bottom line stuff. It was, uh, how do we do this? How do we, uh, I remember making assignments uh, and very often a written assignment would be longer than the story I got back because they needed to know so much background on this stuff. Uh, and uh, uh, it was, I, I always felt like it, it hummed along in the, in the 80s, but I'm not a bottom line guy. Tom's a bottom line guy, mm -hmm. so he could probably do a little better explanation on that end of it than I can. No, it's just, it's, it's. Uh, What's different? What's different between now? What's different between now as far as, you, know, you were saying how things were really popping along, with the, uh, but I hear people say that now's better as far as business opportunities, that type of thing. I so. think it's the fluidity of professions. Uh, people don't uh, go to Acme Widgets because their grandpappies did and, and then stay there for 20, 30 years. Right. Um, it's a, it is a lot of jumping around. I mean, you'll see people, you'll see career switchers that are just crazy. I mean, uh, you know, we've had everyone from a neurosurgeon to a moonshiner uh, on the front cover, as a matter of fact. And uh, that moonshiner could have been a neurosurgeon four years ago. It's just it's strange the way people are moving. There's, there's, uh, and kids, kids today, uh, even going to college, they're not even sure what they're going to go into as they graduate. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably good that they have that uncertainty because it's an uncertain uh, you know, world out there. And, the, and of course, the biggest thing we're, we're watching right now, uh, the biggest crisis, if you will, is the labor. The, the labor uh, situation is just, it's pretty dire, actually. It is. It's weird because the unemployment is coming down, the, the figures, mm -hmm. but people, uh, and I almost think that, you know, the unemployment bonus will be have ended by the time this airs, but I think uh, in a lot of cases, workers, when they go back to work, they're going to be in a better position to ask for a higher wage. I think that's, that is, that's a point that's being made with an exclamation. You know, it, it uh, pay us and we'll work. Pay us. Or, or I've always thought of pay as being about fifth on the list of people's priorities. But you've got to pay people a living wage mm -hmm. and then treat them with respect. And again, I, I, just, I just finished doing a story about some of the better places to work in the Roanoke Valley. And the one thing they all had in common was that they respected the people who worked for them. Uh, and that means a lot. Well, one of them, one of them, honest to God, gives unlimited vacation. And all you have to do is walk in and say, I'm going away for two weeks. And you get paid for it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, and that's, that's probably a little over the top. But... Uh, uh, but a lot of those people don't abuse it. And I that worked none in a place, of them does. I worked in a place like that once. It was unlimited PTO or whatever. And I don't take a lot of vacations anyway, but I didn't abuse it because right. we all knew that if we abuse it, it would go away. It's exactly right. I think so. And uh, uh, it, uh, uh, they, these businesses consider the fact that you have children that need to be raised uh, and that sometimes you have to be there. And they consider your personal needs and not just their own. And I think that those businesses... I, I hate to say they're the future because some of them are here right now, but I think they're going to be a lot of the successful businesses in the future. Mm -hmm. How much, uh, you mentioned a little bit, but how much has COVID changed the business view and, 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 and what's residual from that, i.e. more remote workers or whatever, but how, is, how have things changed, if yeah. maybe permanently? Well, it, it has permeated uh, every industry uh, that, that we're looking at. And of course, we're we're really watching some, um, uh, you know, healthcare. Obviously, we're going to watch what's happening there. Uh, and technology is always exciting because they're they're trying to look for solutions and and get through things. Um, the I would say, huh, I would say, uh, the, one of the industries that has probably suffered the most is education. I mean, it it is just Absolutely. 
it is pretty horrific out there. I hate to, <laughs> hate to be doing all the gloom and uh, doom things, but on, the, on the education, something's gonna, going to have to change with that. Uh, as far as? Well, you have, you have well, you know, the education came in and technology resolved a lot pretty quickly. We were actually very surprised. Remote places where we're getting hybrid classes. Uh, they stepped up to that challenge really quickly. Uh, the problem is everyone thought it was going to be a little more temporary than it turned out to be. So, uh, but you know, you got you got frustrated parents, you got underserved uh, students, uh, you have a uh, bamboozled administration, and caught in the middle of all of it, the, wor the worst victim is the the teachers. The teachers aren't they're not being really supported by any of those. Um, from, from students to parents to administration, uh, I, I really feel for teachers. Teachers, mm -hmm. is one, teachers and nurses uh, are being called heroes, and that's, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty apt because uh, of what they're having to do just they to had do their jobs, jobs. Before all this happened, exactly. anyway. Well, one nurses. of the tragedies here is that uh, this is all normal to the kids. They don't know anything else. I've, I've got a, a I have a couple of grandkids. Uh, one of them's in high school, and uh, one is in elementary school, and this is pretty much what they know. Uh, my granddaughter missed her uh, missed her soft her freshman and sophomore years in high school. Basically, she couldn't go to school, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just not normal for us, but it is for them. And I I don't know how to feel about that. Let's talk a little bit about how we get to the next level. It seems to me that basically, the Roanoke Valley really has not grown population-wise. And there are people here that don't want it to become the next Charlotte, but what do we do to get to the next level where we're really spinning off jobs from the Franklin Biomedical Research Institute that are creating lots of jobs or, or really taking advantage of what's coming out of Virginia Tech, where maybe we build that business park between Roanoke and Blacksburg, like around mm -hmm. Dixie Caverns, where people can come from both directions. It happens all over the U.S. That's where you have commerce along the interstate, but how do we get to that next level? It seems like we're, we're always kind of, in, in that sense, population-wise, we're sort of running in place. You just bumped up the uh, uh, property values in Dixie Caverns <laughs> by about triple. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Tom. No, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing to watch. You know, I was just thinking about um, what you were saying. You know, Roanoke, the, 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 the bad thing about Roanoke right now is that the, there is a spike on the, on the crime, uh, and it and it doesn't fare very well. Uh, but what we've do, what when we really look at um, the statistic that matters the most is um, it's a direct correlation between employment and crime. Uh, if you have a, a community that's employed, productive, uh, the crime is much lower, and that's true all over the board. So. I think uh, well, with all the studies, and there's a lot of planning going on, there's the planning, there's the uh, county plan, there's uh, regional plans, there's uh, statewide plans. Uh, with all the planning going on, we really do need to, uh, if, if we can do anything to stay out of the way and let people uh, create and uh, let jobs come in and let uh, businesses start up, uh, that's, that actually is a very, good, that's mm -hmm. a very good response. One of the things that uh, I think is important that traditionally we've, we've complained about is cooperation among the governments. Right, I wanted to talk about that. Is it better now, regional cooperation? Well, I'm doing a, I'm doing a piece on the, uh, uh, the recreation departments in, uh, uh, in the Roanoke Valley, and uh, it's, it's a long story, but uh, I'm doing it. And I sat down with the guys over in Salem, the guys and women over in Salem yesterday, and it's second nature to them to work with the other localities on things, like the, uh, the, the, the Iron Man recently. Right. Uh, I mean, that was in three localities. Salem didn't have anything over there, and you know, you would think Salem's gonna jump up and pitch a fit. No, Salem was a support system with, uh, with uh, hotels and uh, advice in some areas and so forth, and they worked very closely together. Now, this is government, it's not business, but it's an indicator that people are willing to do things. Yeah. You know, I wanted to ask you, go back to the, and you, you said you're working on a, a story about outdoor amenities and how they attract people. You know, with, with everybody working remotely, or a lot of people, I mean, my daughter got hired for a job in Florida through z two Zoom interviews um, before she moved down there. But uh, 
is, is, it, is that possibly something that could help get more people to this area if the companies they work for are more amenable to them working remote, remotely? You know, to come out of Nova or somewhere else where they can take advantage of the outdoor lifestyle. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that the companies, the companies are not care in some situations. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there, there are jobs obviously that you have to be there, but right. uh, they're opening up to it. Some are are slow, and those some are going to suffer for it. I think because, uh, you know, if you uh, if you broaden your scope on your employees, you get better employees. Right. Yep. I mean the remote the remote. The remote thing is definitely happening. Uh, we all know people, family members, or uh, some jobs are just, I have, I have one daughter who traveled all the time, and she's been like 100% remote mm -hmm. since March of last year, you know, I mean, and, and doing exactly what she was doing before. Uh, and it's interesting how the, uh, it's still producing. You know, the, 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 the definitely physical on-site uh, service sector, restaurants, things like that, they, that, that's a strange, uh, they, they have a they have an uphill battle for sure. Uh, and you have to check to see, you know, a lot of them are closed. You're, you're not real sure if a restaurant's gonna be open. Uh, some of them are closing Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, yeah. or all three, and you just gotta check things like that. But uh, yeah, I think, I think the technology is showing uh, uh, possibilities that weren't explored mm -hmm. before on how you, can get, how you can get work done. I was just down in the Outer Banks and there were places that were closed on a busy weekend because they couldn't get enough people or mm -hmm. they apologized, had to give people a day off because they've been working forever. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about, before we're running out of time here, talk about your novel. You sort of left the ownership of the Valley Business Front and the editorship behind in part to write your novel, that News. Was, yeah, that, well, no, that was uh, to write my novel, uh, uh, Clog. 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 Okay. I, okay. I left there to write Clog. And, uh, uh, my granddaughter explained to a friend of hers that her pampa had a new book and it was called Clog and it wasn't about what happened in the bathroom. <laughs> but uh, th this one is news. News, uh, okay. And it, Based on your 50 year career as a journalist? Well, it's, uh, it's, you know, a, a novel pretty much comes through a person's life. But uh, this takes place in uh, the fall of 1969 in Asheville, and it starts off with an airplane crash, which really happened. And most of the stuff in this I've either seen or taken part in. And it's a look at what the newsroom was uh, 50 years ago. And uh, it's, a, it's a fun story, I think. And it's, uh, it's got some intrigue and lust and love and you know, so forth. All the good stuff. All the good stuff. When do you think that'll stuff. be available? It will be available next summer. We're editing right now, okay. and we have a lot of marketing to do. Just a couple of minutes left. Uh, you wanted to mention, uh, what do you look forward to covering in the future, Tom, what, you know, as far as from a business viewpoint? Tell me, I'm the editor, you can help me. Yeah, right, but, <laughs> give you but, your assignments. Right, right, but you know, <laughs> what, what do you look forward to? Do you see, for instance, do you see more spin-offs coming out of like the FBRI or something? Oh Pretty yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely there. That's gonna be, uh, uh, that is a given. That's already, we're already seeing spin-offs. Um, if you sit down with them and, uh, <laughs> if you sit down and ask them, you know, what, what's the latest, uh, it's not one thing, it's, it's, it's all over the place. So yeah, definitely spinoffs, uh, uh, diversification, like I said before. Uh, I think the service sector, we're gonna really watch and see how they adjust and change and uh, move into the new economy, if you will. Um, education, again, we're really gonna be watching that. Uh, Gosh, legal, there's a lot of legal issues we're watching. A lot of things are changing on that front. So, you know, uh, as far as what I'm looking forward to, uh, it's kind of interesting because we, we, we do the, uh, we do all, all kinds of stories, as you know, uh, but it's, it's funny you have, you know, you have, we, we do very few negative things, but there are things that happen, layoffs, embezzlements, things like that. Uh, people gravitate to those stories. So we'll have, we'll, we'll always have a few of those. Uh, then you have the rags to riches. You know, ev everyone likes that. If I feel like if you're not, if if you don't don't hear a rags to riches story, and that's not interesting to you, you're you're probably not an inter inter <laughs> interesting right. person. So uh, you have you have that, and then of course we always just have the, the part where we just you know basically give the news out of what what's happening. So. I think people like rags to riches because maybe they put themselves in that story and they said, what? well this this guy or gal had a great idea and they actually went for it. One of the things I always liked about what we did, we didn't do it intentionally when I was with the front, was we would pop up with these, these stories about people who were laid off or downsized or whatever. They lost their primary income and they were forced 
to follow their bliss. That, that was the happiest bunch of people. They, you know, they would just dump their income mm -hmm. and uh, uh, go build fiddles. You know, and they were happy. Uh, and I, I just, I always thought that that was, that was an interesting story to tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, happiness is a little underrated. Exactly. Right? We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, Tom Field and Dan Smith um, from uh, Valley Business Front and Roanoke Magazine and just covering the Valley for so long in the business uh, scene. Um, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank Later, you, John. I'm Gene Moreno. Thank you for joining us on Business Matters. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.